Welcome to Hidden Riches. My name's Andrew Hill. And for the next few weeks, I think I'm going to be sharing a little bit of stories behind God's voice and how his voice has impacted my life and what God is really like to me, um, the encounters I've had with him. So for this first kind of series I want to do, I want to talk about how I ended up at Sweetbriar College. So my wife and I currently work at Sweetbriar College. I work uh, as campus safety there. She works in the Elston Inn. And um, when we came back from Alaska, we'd been in Alaska for two years on a little island called Sitka, beautiful place. That rattling you're hearing in the background is our rabbit, Rosie. She's drinking some water. Yeah, she looks like she's got plenty in there. So we had moved to um, Sitka and was there for two years. And that's going to be another story for another time. I'm going to talk a little bit about how we got there, which is a huge part of how God speaks and how wonderful his voice is. Um, but when we got back in 2020, it was around August. It was August 20th, I think, 2020. My in-laws were very gracious and they allowed us to stay there um, until we found uh, a place to live and a place to work because we came back with no like it was just completely by faith. We didn't know where we were going to work or even where we were going to live. Um, we had some uh, some money left, but uh, it was just completely open to what the Lord wanted to do. And we had kind of gotten used to that kind of a lifestyle. So uh, we had a household of seven people, one bathroom, one floor. So it was a very interesting time. We weren't there for very long. We were there for just a few months. But on the third day of me staying with my in-laws, I had a dream. Dreams are increasingly important concerning how God speaks. They're one of the primary ways that God communicates. And it's interesting because we don't always put a lot of stock in our dreams. Um, I think that it's something that Christians, the church, saints, we have to get back to because it's so prevalent all throughout Scripture and especially in the Gospels, some of the most important messages God gave was through a dream. So uh, it's the third night there, and I go into this dream, and I'm in a heavily wooded area. It's like, it's got to be a, a, this forest with these large trees. The trees are so large, you can actually sit in them. You can kind of live in them. Um, not Not huge, not like a house, but big enough to where a person could comfortably live inside of it. And um, I, I don't remember if there were doors on the trees, but I remember thinking that people were coming in and out of some of these trees. <clears throat> and um, my voice is going to be looked at here in a little bit. I've been just trying to, trying to rest it <clears throat> and work through it. But anyway, um, in this dream, uh, Andy McDowell is in the dream. And now I'm not a huge Andy McDowell fan I couldn't name two of her movies. I know she was in Multiplicity. I don't even think I watched that all the way through. So I'm just, I just don't follow her work as, as an actress. And I don't know anything about her. I hadn't been thinking about her. But she's in this dream. And she's talking to an older lady with grayish hair. She's an elderly lady. And she tells her, she says, I think it's actually the elderly lady that tells Andy. She says... It's where the vixens live. It's where the vixens dwell. <clears throat> and I got it from that dream. And I remember that I had friends of mine that went to Sweetbriar College. They took classes there when we were in high school. Some of the guys took art classes. And then I had friends of mine that were ladies. They graduated from Sweetbriar. And they were vixens. And so I looked that up. I looked Sweetbriar up. I was like, you know, the female foxes, you know, the vixens. And, and sure enough, there's this position that's open for security. Now, when I was in Alaska, I worked in the hospital. SEARCH um, is what we call it. The acronym is Southeast Alaska. Southeast Alaska um, Regional Health Consortium. So it looks like CERC. And I had a guy I worked with who used to joke about it all the time. I think they switched the age in the scene because um, it probably was taken as far as an online presence. But um, 
I had done security for two years. Um, and so I was kind of prepped for this. I have an associate's in psychology. So uh, I applied for the job and I met Brian Marker. And um, Brian had hired me um, on as a part-time part at the gate as a CSO one officer. And I'd put my application in in other places and I was getting interviewed really quickly. You know, Buffalo Air Handling, Alden's, uh, Alden's, I think it's called. Numerous places were interviewing me and they wanted to hire me quickly. I said, Director Marker, we've got to do something because um, these are the jobs that are trying to pay me. And so he said, let's, let's bump you up and make you a CSO too. And that's how I came on to be a part of campus safety and a part of Sweetbriar. Sometime later, I was afforded the opportunity to preach in the chapel. Rebecca Dilling was working with a lot of the, the young adults and ladies that were coming through class. And um, we had met and she said, I want you to start preaching in the chapel. So Beth and I would come and lead and worship and preach. And um, around that time, I told her about my dream. And even when I was hired on the campus safety, Brian was like, why are you, you know, interested in this job? I said, I had a dream. I told him the truth. I said, the Lord gave me a dream and uh, he didn't question it. I said, it's just, he just, it, it's his way of communicating and saying, there's something there at Sweetbrow, there's something I want you to be a part of. Assignments I want you to complete there. But while I was helping Rebecca Dilling, which was for about a 10 month stint, at the same time, we were also helping Power of Praise uh, Church. Power of Praise Center is in Monroe. So we would minister, Bethany and I, at Sweetbriar, and then we would come back and go to, um, in time for Power of Praise. We'd lead and worship there. And I preached just a few times there. Uh, eventually, they asked if we, if we wanted to share their building, which we did. And that's where we are. We're there right now. Metaphys Ministries is there right now. Um, Fire along the Lord chooses. But when I was helping Rebecca, a revelation came to me. And I was talking about Andy McDowell and everything. But I realized not only is Andy, A-N-D-I-E, a variation of Andrew or Andy, A-N-D-R-E-W. It's a feminine version of that. But also it came to me that the older lady in the dream was actually the older version of Andy. It was the elderly version of Andy. So the future pr version, the prophetic version, the future self of Andy was speaking to her past self. And she was telling her that vixens, um, that, that um, it's where the vixens dwell. And so she was saying that where you're headed is towards Sweetbriar. So it actually was this prophetic message to me that Andrew, you're going to be a part of Sweetbriar. And, um, for however long the Lord chooses. And so he's really been unfolding a lot of other amazing revelations since I've been there. And um, uh, I'm grateful to be a part of that community and what he's doing. But I just thought I would share that story because it's just one of the ways that he communicates. And I got to preach that in the chapel um, when various alumni had come, including um, Pat Robertson's daughter, I was looking over here because I had our book and Claire Griffith was there and Mary Pope Hudson was there. She wasn't the president at the time, but they were there with various alumni. So I preached and I preached on dreams. It just was what the Lord had prompted on my heart to preach. And I shared the story of Andy McDowell and how I came to Sweetbriar. And when I finished, Claire called me over to meet Pat Robertson's daughter, whose name escapes me right now. And she gave me a signed copy of her book. And she looked at me and she said, you know, I have heard a lot of sermons and I've been in a lot of churches, but I've never heard anyone preach about dreams the way you just did. And that was both exciting to me and disheartening to me because I thought to myself, as prevalent as dreams as they are in scripture and how God communicates you would think that we minister on it more often than we do. So that part was sad to me, but it was great that God had prompted me to minister on something that was fresh and new to her. And I pray that it not only spoke to her, but 
those in her inner circle. So this is just one of the stories I wanted to share through Hidden Riches. We're going to be touching on the apostolic again and the acorn and how the prophetic and apostolic, all of that works together. Um, we have Transformation Sundays here in Monroe from 2 to 6. Please feel free to stop by. We're a revolving door. Um, people come in and out. Sometimes we have a pretty good amount of people. Sometimes it's just us. And, and we're used to that kind of influx because we're trying to give the saints, Christians, other believers, the equipment they need to fulfill their purpose and mission in life, in the field that they're in, in their career field, in their ministry field, in their families. Um, and and then they're, they're all going to be a small group that's going to be a part of us and stay with us. But for the most part, we're there to equip them, train them, encounter the Lord with them, um, enjoy Jesus together, and then send them back out into the community. Father, I thank you for your voice. I thank you that dreams are powerful, that they have great meaning, there's, that there's such a thing as God dreams, that we don't always just have to have dark dreams and nightmares or pizza dreams that seemingly have no meaning, but we can have dreams where your voice is paramount, where your voice is the supreme thing. And I pray that anyone listening to this, anyone who finds this, will ask you to speak to them in dreams, that they would experience, that there would be a fresh anointing and oil from heaven on their life to hear your voice through dreams. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love you guys. Have a good night.